and we're live from Mainnet New York City 2021, the Messery event. Really happy to be today with Evan Shapiro, which you already seen on the YouTube channel, the founder of Mina Protocol. How are you doing, man? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. All right, good. A quick recap on what Mina is in a few minutes would be really nice for people discovering the tech or who have no clue about what it is. That would be interesting. Yeah, uh, Mina is a cryptocurrency that replaces the traditional process of verifying a long blockchain, which gets longer and longer, with verifying a zero-knowledge proof. And this is great for a couple of reasons. It's great because um, you can verify Mina very cheaply in just a few kilobytes from any device. And it's also really good because it lets developers start using some of the zero-knowledge proof uh, technology from the smart contracts they're building on Mina. Uh, so between both of those, it's uh, hopefully something that's, that's useful for the industry and for people. And very cool. And what I really like about Mina is that it's not another EVM compatible blockchain that is forking or taking some you know, uh, toolkit to design a blockchain to put something out. It's really something that's built on the ground up, leveraging the potential of ZK Snacks to make like the, the, the succinct blockchain. And it's really built around that. So it's a new code uh, to, 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 yeah, a new layer one from the ground up, yeah. basically. And lately you had the Snaps Ideation Workshop where developers in the community could interact and basically share the best ideas that, you know, of snaps that could be deployed on Mina. What are your favorite ones and when can we see concretely these applications come to reality in the next, uh, you know, coming months and years? Yeah, so I, I, there's one I like in particular because it hits a sweet spot of like a few of practicality. I think it's fun um, is, is proof of trade. So this is proving that I have a certain balance on an exchange, or I've had a certain sequences of transactions on an exchange, um, which is both kind of fun for bragging rights, <laughs> for, for, for showing that people, but also it could be a useful tool for um, uh, helping improve the collateralization problem of DeFi, because you can have funds potentially that are on exchanges, and you don't necessarily have to have on-chain locked up there, um, so there's potential ways of improving the collateralization problem also. So there's like a lot of different ways this can uh, be fun and, and useful. And there's other ones I would mention as well, but that's at least one that I like. All right, very cool, very cool, very cool. And lately, um, speaking about the news, since we're doing quite, quite a follow-up to the previous podcast, lately we've heard about that, that bridge, that link with Polygon, which allows Polygon users to benefit from the privacy potential uh, that derives from Mina, yeah. that Mina allows users to have. Uh, when is, um, ba basically, when will still this bridge be operational? And my question number two would be, when can we hope to see this kind of bridge appearing with other layer ones that are also, like, let's say, popular, like uh, Avalanche or Solana lately, Phantom? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so a lot of the work we're doing with Polygon, and also with other chains, is going to leverage the core work we're doing with that Ethereum RFP in producing a, a basically smart contract code that runs a program which verifies MENA zero knowledge proof. The same way that your device can verify this zero knowledge proof, just a smart contract can as well, can as well which is awesome. Because um, it makes a very secure, very secure bridge. So it, it really, so a lot of chunk of that work is doing that piece, and we'll have more news out on that soon. And then once that's done, it's doing kind of like a little bit on top of that that just makes that work smoothly with Polygon in particular. Uh, and there's other ones that we are exploring outside of just Ethereum and Polygon, but nothing nothing announced yet. Um, but I, I, I mean, I, I would really love to see if Mina was bridged to like many, many different chains uh, for a lot of different reasons. So it's something I'm trying to make happen and I'm excited about. That's very exciting. It's very interesting. Speaking of the Mina ecosystem, are there any, someone like who, who, who wants to know more about this technology, are there any tools to explore it, forums that deal, like that cover what's happening on Mina that you like, websites, tools, and yeah, are, are there any community projects that in your opinion deserves more visibility? Mm. So, so on the first part on resources, one I particularly like is one actually made by a community member, mina.awesome.tools. And this is basically just like a list of all the resources and things people have built for Mina so far. Uh, so it's both an awesome overview of all the things that have been done, as well as it puts it all in one place. I, you know, I think it's, it's kind of a step better than saying go to the website or like the Twitter. Like this is like community built and it has much more things on it than, than uh, we could have the time to organize. Um, so that's, there's that. 
In terms of like tools, uh, there are some block explorers and staking explorers that have come out, like uh, Tower Stake and, and stuff that I, I think just do a really good job visualizing activity on the chain and showing just things like how much staking is going on and who are who's, who are the best performing block producers. Uh, so I, I like those a lot. I also just like seeing data visualized. So it's also just me, but yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Lately, I've had um, I've been chatting with Eli Ben Sasson a few times, and I've been taking a big interest into uh, for, for Starkware and this famous zk stars. So I like everything that has to deal with privacy, and uh, I just had the feeling that these zk Starks uh, transparent. They, they they're like the augmented version of zk Snarks, despite the fact that they're a bit heavier. I want to speak about you about the potential of, I mean, like, how do you see ZK Starks compared to ZK Snarks? Are they, in your opinion, better? And can we foresee an eventual upgrade of the minimum network to ZK Starks? Because we hear that they are, they don't have any trusted setup, that they're quantum resistant in some circumstances, and that mm -hmm. uh, the exponentially, like, the, the verification becomes cheap. I mean, can you tell yeah, us more yeah, about yeah. that? So, so I think there, it is true there was a brief window of time in which Starks were better, but I think that since then, Snarks have leapfrogged them again, and now Snarks are, are, are in my opinion anyway, better again. Uh, it remains to be seen how that goes. Now, the, the important elements there is one trusted setup, like you mentioned, for a while, Snarks had trusted setup, Starks didn't have trusted setup, which is a huge selling point. Exactly. Now Snarks don't need trusted setup again, so we're kind of like back on that front fixed. Do you use hash functions? Um, no, it uses a discrete log, but like uh, it, this is something cryptographers are very okay with and it, it's fine. Uh, the, other, the other component here to think about is the ability to do uh, recursion, which is something that Starks still struggle with, uh, Starks that verify their Starks. And it's something that snarks are very efficient at. So now it's a place where snarks are more efficient for recursion, but they don't have the quantum resistance. So you've got to pick between those. Now, what I think will probably happen is there will be some, just like there's new versions of snarks showing up, there'll be new versions of snarks at some point, and then new versions of snarks. And we'll see when we get to the first version that has all these properties, recursion, a small size, no trusted setup, and is quantum resistant. And then there'll be an upgrade at some point for Mina. But I think that... These are still things are still going so quickly. We'll we'll see in like probably a few years what that actually looks like that Mina will want to upgrade to one day. This is really like super fascinating. Yeah. This whole like Stark Stark, um, you know, uh, evolution. And I think that because of the the, the heaviness of this um, of these proofs, we cannot have this succinct blockchain as we have like this twenty two kilobyte anymore. If we migrate like let's say in a hypothetical situation where we migrate Mina to from Snark to Stars, I think it would be harder to package that into something smaller. And you spoke yeah. about recursion also. Yeah. Mean is very dependent on the recursion. Sure. And exactly. it's also really good for developers because you can make a snark proof on your own machine and then shift the snark proof out. And then Mina just verifies that proof. So it's um, really good for privacy because you only ever ship the proof from your system. You never ship the actual underlying data. Uh, and the recursion is very efficient. So that's like a very important property that makes Mina what it is. Uh, and quantum resistance will matter in like the coming decades, but not quite yet. And I think that you know there'll, there'll be some some super version that puts everything together, like we've seen happen with Snarks bringing a lot of the Stark advantages back in by the time it becomes relevant. Super interesting. Yeah, we'll just, just keep me frogging until. Yeah. One last point I wanted to cover on this uh, on this update with you is the um, the question of the finality uh, of the block time question on Mina. Yeah, uh, it's it's for sure shorter than, than than Bitcoin, but it's still quite some time until you add a block to Mina. And I've been having a lot of feedbacks from the community as this is way too slow in terms of UX. It implies quite um qu quite some trickiness, some slowdown. Can we foresee like an update on Mina that would make this time much slower and enable like basically offer a better experience for users? Yeah, so it's on the roadmap. Uh, the important things to us right now are like getting use cases happening. And a lot, there's a lot of use cases where you don't need instant finality, you don't need super fast block time. You're putting proofs of identity, proofs of off-chain information on chain that then can be leveraged elsewhere. And that at least starts getting things going in a way that'll be useful to people, I think. Uh, the key to adding some of those things you said there are two um, uh, re reasonably large projects that have to happen on Mina. One is moving from a single validator per block to many validators per block. That solves finality. 
Uh, the other half of that is uh, moving around where some of the snark work goes. You can have shorter block times. Uh, between both of those, you can kind of get Mina to the optimal state, but it's like going to be farther down, farther down the roadmap. Yeah. Pretty cool. And last time I had you on the podcast, we were speaking about the um, smart, contract, smart contract languages that are, were available in Mina. So we had the Camel Pro, this language that's pretty famous at Jane Street and in France. Then we had the JavaScript project, which mm. is coming to light. And um, can we now foresee a, a war for something that would allow Solidity developers or REST developers to build on Mina? I'm asking you again. Mm. So, so what we've done with the JavaScript TypeScript side is we've taken we already have basically a library that you use from OCaml to write snark programs. We've made that library just a little oversimplification, but usable from JavaScript TypeScript. So really when you're using JavaScript TypeScript, you're talking to a, a backend library that's actually constructing the snark proof as you kind of write your JavaScript TypeScript code. So the key is to port that library to something like Rust, and then something like Rust you could write uh, smart contracts from Muna in as well. Uh, I don't know exactly what we would want to do for Solidity on that front, but I feel like the JavaScript TypeScript stuff like kind of covers the bases enough that between those we're, we're in pretty good shape for available languages. Very cool, very cool. Well, any last message you would like to share with the French community who wants to get involved on the dev end or even on the community end? Uh... Yeah, I, I, I will be having more coming out on, on Snark programmability very soon. And I, I would like definitely encourage people to follow, uh, follow our Twitter and follow our, our social for chances to learn about how to get involved with those. We have a team that really is excited about educating the community and sharing how to use this technology. And I think it'll be really cool because zero knowledge proofs haven't been available to developers before in the way this will make it. Um, so I would just encourage people to check that out. I think it's going to be really interesting if you're a developer just to learn about what you can do with, with zero knowledge proofs. And as you guys, as usual, guys, I hope you won't end up. Um, I mean, like you can find in this, in this, um, in the description of this content once it's out on YouTube, all the documentation and links that you might need associated with this podcast and like this show. Um, yeah, I was really happy to have you on that, uh, on that, yeah, on the channel again. Thank yeah. you very much, Evan. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, super happy. <laughs>